All right, um, we're, in, we're in the book of Luke. Let's read a couple of verses, and then we'll, we'll give thanks to the Lord. Luke chapter number 17, and verse number 26. The Lord says, and as it was in the days of Noah, that's Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and they drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. From heaven. Amen. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. And then verse 32 has this ominous kind of uh, connotation to it. He just says, remember Lot's wife. And that's why I entitled this, Remember Lot's Wife. Why, in the, in the, in the, in the middle of telling them about what it's going to be like right before his return to the earth to set up his kingdom, and obviously there's the wrath and then the kingdom, why would the Lord Jesus Christ tell these Jews to remember Lot's wife? Well, first and foremost, he wants them to go back in their minds, and if they don't remember, go back and look at the scripture like we're going to look at. We're going to go back to the, the issue of Lot's wife. Now, before we do, I want to make sure everyone knows who Lot is, okay? So before we can know about Lot's wife, we have to know about Lot. Go to Genesis chapter 11. Uh, Lot he shows up in the book of Genesis. So right from the beginning uh, of, of, of the history of the Hebrew people, uh, Lot is a Hebrew. We're going to see that. Uh, but in particular, he's a Hebrew. Uh, he's, he's of the family of the patriarch Abraham. Okay, Most of you guys know that, but maybe someone's going to see this on YouTube or, or here, and they said, who is this Lot? Look at Genesis 11. This is the calling out of Abraham. Uh, the the Tower of Babel takes place, and then some time takes place. God confuses the languages. And because of that rebellion of man, God chose out one man, and uh, that's Abraham. But Abraham had family members as well. Look at Genesis chapter 11. Go all the way down to verse 27 for time's sake. Lot first comes on the scene right here. Verse 27. Genesis 11, 27. Now these are the generations of Terah. Uh, to get to, let's see about Terah. Look at verse 26. And Terah lives 70 years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Let's give thanks to the Father. Heavenly Father, we just uh, want to pause right now to give you thanks and praise for this time together tonight. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for uh, the word made flesh, your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shed blood on the cross for our sins. We thank you um, that um, our dear brother Ryan is back after months away uh, from the fellowship and the assembly. Uh, to bring us comfort and, and, and joy to see him, see his face in the flesh, as Paul says. We appreciate him. We thank, we're thankful he's back uh, as, as every joint supplied. He was, he was missed. He's needed. We're, we're glad to have him back. We ask your mercy on him as he gets back into the swing of things, both with uh, his work and with the work of the, the labor in the, in the Lord. We thank you for uh, this time together. May you bless it. Give us understanding of the topic. And most importantly, a greater appreciation of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Uh, Lot. Notice Lot comes from the line of Abram. Verse 26, and Terah lived 70 years. And we got Terah is the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And what we're going to learn, look at verse 27. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And then Haran has a son. His name is Lot. So Lot, as you can see, is Abraham's nephew, okay? That's the first time we see Lot. Now, Lot's going to be coming into play in a moment. Look, look down at verse 31. Uh, Genesis 11, verse 31. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, so that's uh, Terah's grandson, Abraham's nephew, and Sarai, that's Abraham's wife, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from, now watch this, from Ur of the Chaldees to go for, go into the land of Canaan. That will ultimately be the land, the, the promised land God gave the right. Hebrew people. Right. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Okay? 
So we see that Lot is right from the beginning. Go to chapter 13. Uh, this is, this is a, a strife. So time goes by. Uh, Abraham and, 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 and is blessed by God. But everyone in his family who's with them, like Lot and his family, uh, he, Lot, Lot his, and his uh, men and his family. Notice in chapter 13. Uh, here's Abram, verse chapter 13 of Genesis. And Abram went up out of Egypt. They made their way down to Egypt and so forth. You can read that in chapter 12. He and his wife, Sarai, and all that he had. But I want you to see Lot and Lot with him into the south. That's where Egypt was, isn't it? Well, this would be as they're making their way. It says he's out of Egypt, so they, they head south. They're moving, they're moving back oh, okay. towards the land of Cain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, verse number five. Speaking of Lot. Now, when it says in Lot also, that means he was rich. Uh, verse two. By the way, this is the verse that a lot of these health, wealth, and prosperity preachers, they use this verse to say that if you give them tithes and offerings, this can happen to you. Uh, look at Genesis 13, verse 2. I've heard them use this back in the day. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold, right? Because God blessed them. Genesis 12, God says, I'm going to bless you. Right. But if you're living with Abraham like Lot was, guess what else? Look at verse number 5. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And they had so much. Look at verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Why? Not because they didn't get along. For their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. Now, although Abraham and Lot were uncle and, and, and nephew, they loved each other, but they're herdsmen. Notice the ver next verse. Verse 7. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the par par Parasite dwelled then in the land, talking about the land of Canaan. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brethren. Now I want you guys to see the grace of Abraham. Abraham was, and the faith of Abraham, he was so, he was so, uh, uh, he was so uh, understanding of, of God's blessing that he says, No matter where I go and what I do, I'm going to be blessed. So he tells he says, Look at all the land around me, right? Watch this, verse 9. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now, Abraham, look at it. He says, you choose. You choose. You know how to get children to, to split something uh, um, uh, equally? If there's something they want, you say one person gets to cut it in half and the other one chooses first. Because if you just let children say, you, you, you go ahead and cut it, they'll, they'll cheat. They'll take the bigger part, you know. But you say, one cuts and the other one chooses. So then they make sure they get it, you know, be fair, like Solomon did. But you know what? Abraham says, hey, I'm not worried about it. Look at where, look at the land. You take whatever you want. Verse 10. And he did. He did. But he did with the lust of the eyes. I'm going to show you something. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere. He, he looked at the beauty of it. Watch this. Right. Before the Lord, and I, I like this, before, what Moses put it. Kinda before the Lord destroyed. He was kind of greedy, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he was, he took, he took a little, little advantage of his, of his uncle there. He's <laughs> like, okay, this one, you know, the, you know that whole, the grass is green on the other side? Sure. Well, well, Lot took advantage of that. He was like, the grass is a little green on the other side. But notice it says, before Lord, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. This is Moses, by the Spirit of God, looking back. By the time he writes this, Sodom and Gomorrah was already destroyed. Moses came later. Anyway, here we go. Even as the garden of the Lord. When Lot looked at the plains, he saw the beauty of it. It was comparable to the garden of Eden. Right. That's how plush it was, okay? Wow. That it was well watered everywhere. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. It was uh, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. As thou comest unto Zor, Zor is going to end up being where Lot uh, lands later. All right, verse 11. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. That's, the, that's not the way to go in Scripture, east. In Scripture, it's good to go west, young man, go west, okay? Like we did, we went west. And they separated themselves the one from the other. 
Now, everybody keep reading. Verse 12. Abraham dwelled in the land of what? Canaan. Canaan. That's God's promised land. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent. Now, I want you to see this. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. He's not in Sodom yet. At least not now. He, he pitched it toward Sodom. In other words, you look outside of Lot's house, he could see Sodom right out there. Now, verse 13. Oh, by the way, 13 is the number of rebellion. Genesis 13, 13. Look what happened. But, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Exceedingly. Ex exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Now, I won't go into, but that has to do with the issue of sodomy. To the point where even in Deuteronomy, Moses says, don't, don't, don't have your daughters to be whores or the men of Israel to be sodomites. They were so known for the type of, of lifestyle they live, homosexual lifestyle, that God says it was, if you read it, we don't have time, but read it yourself. God himself came down, the Lord came down with angels and had to look at it. He wanted to personally investigate. Right. He reminds me of these judges. I, I, you know, O.J. Simpson thing was out just recently. Uh, he, had, he had some confessional thing back in 2006 where they were playing that. And I heard during that trial, they took the jurors out of L.A., uh, the courtroom, went down to Brentwood where it happened, and they wanted them to see the, the, the actual uh, place where the bodies were and so forth. They went, they, had to, they went to examine with their eyes. And that's kind of how the Lord did with, with, the, with the Tower of Babel. He came down. To look and with the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, he actually went there. Noah also. Noah, that's right. Well, he was the difference then before the flood of Noah, God lived on this earth. The Lord was here. Remember the cherubim? After the flood, God went back to heaven. And what I'm saying is after that, he, he actually came to check things out. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So I want you to see that. That issue of Lot. Um, now I'm, I'm, we're gonna get to Lot's wife in a minute. We gotta see Lot first. Look at chapter 14 of Genesis. Verse 11, chapter 14, verse 11. Now there's these kings, and then there's these fights between these kings, and when they fight, they, they would um, spoil the, the people. They take the goods and the people. Look at verse 11. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals. You know, they were feasted pretty well there at Sodom, and went their way. Verse 12, and they took Lot. Now here's their problem. There was a man there at Sodom who was blessed of God. And they took Lot, Abram's brother, son, brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom. Now, by the way, when we last saw Lot, was he dwelling in Sodom? No. It says he dwelt in Sodom. Here he, he said he's dwelling in Sodom now. But when, I, when we first read, he just pitched his tent towards Sodom. Yeah. Now, i got to get this. He pitched his tent. He wasn't in Sodom yet, but he was contemplating. He was looking at it because it was looking good. Uh -huh. The next time we see Lot, he's not just pitching his tent towards Sodom. He's living in Sodom. He moved his tent. And he moved it to the wrong place. Did everybody see that? Yeah. Verse 12. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. Now, you can read all the rest of this, but Abram went with his guards. They went out and rescued Lot and his family and all the things. Okay. Abraham was a warrior, too. We forget about that. But here's what I want y'all to know. Before we talk about Lot's wife, we find out, okay, he was a, he was a man who was Abraham's family, uh, nephew. He, he wasn't in Sodom, and all of a sudden, he's in Sodom. He's being drawn away from Abraham. He's getting farther and farther from Abraham. You made the wrong choice. Well, because his wife is going to be from Sodom. That's the problem. When he says, remember Lot's wife, the reason Lot's wife is, a, is an issue is he should have never been with this woman in the first place. Right. She was from Sodom. Yeah, she was from Sodom. Krista always said, where, 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 if, if it's in, think about Moses. Um, Krista's from Minnesota, and Minnesota did something. It was They were trying to be kind, but they didn't. They, they took in a lot of Somali Muslims years ago because they, it, was, it, was, it was war going on. And they opened up that cold place there. I know those, those Somalis, they were thankful, but it was cold in Minnesota. They said, can't I get somewhere warmer? Because they're from Africa. And the, the, the first generation was so thankful, and they just loved being there, and thank you. But these other generations who were born in America are now starting to do all these terror uh, plots and stuff, want to blow up the Mall of America. And what's going on? Because they were born not in Somalia, but here in America. And Krista made a good point. Just like with Moses, 
who from a baby was raised in Egypt for 40 years, he still had in his heart that he was a Hebrew. Remember that? Mm -hmm. You can't take it out of him. So Crystal was saying, although they're Samoan, they were born here, it's still something in them that goes back to their home. See, that's what's going on. They're born in America, but they're 19 years old, second, third generation, and they want to blow up America. Wow. And what's, what's that? What's going on? Because they still have in their heart their home. Well, that's what happened with, uh, I want you to see here, when we look at Lot's, with, with Lot, Abram's brother's son, and dwelt in Sodom, and his, what's going to happen is, his, we're going to see his wife had that. We're going to see that. Let me show you this. Look at um, chapter number 14. We did 14. Yeah. Look at verse 14. 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. Okay, I, I, sh I showed you guys that. So y'all can read that for time's sake. Abraham went and delivered Lot. Go over to chapter number 18. So we make it our way. Fifth, chapter 15 is the covenant God makes with Abraham. That's the covenant Paul spoke, speaks about, where he says, tell the stars. That's the, that's the covenant that you just believe the Lord. He tells you something impossible to do and you believe. Okay, that's that covenant. Uh, go over to uh, chapter number, what did I tell you, 18? Yeah. Look at verse 16. I'm trying to, there's a lot here that are happening. you can read on your own. I'm summing up this about, so we get to Lot's wife. Look at chapter 18, verse 16. These are the angels who came with the Lord. Uh, you remember this, Dodie, remember the... Remember the Lord promised Abraham that Sarah would have a child? And she laughed? That's this. So look at why they're there. Not just to tell Abraham and Sarah they're going to have Isaac. They're coming to see Sodom and Gomorrah and the wickedness. Look look at this. Verse 16. Everybody got uh, Genesis 18, 16? Yeah. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. Now look, Abraham doesn't live in Sodom. He lives outside of Sodom. They start saying, you know, over there, man, we're going. Watch this. <laughs> and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and the Lord said, now you know what's going on. Abraham's a godly man. He has the mind of the Lord. He has God's heart. He knows what they're about to do. So I'm not going to go through it. you got to read on your own. But Abraham realized they're going to destroy the city or the cities round about. And Abraham, because he knows his nephew's there, he's saying, please, Lord, even if, what if there's 50 righteous, would you destroy it? And they said, no, not for the 50. And he goes, well, you know, I don't want to bother you. What about 40? They make it 30. He, 25, he's just going down, down, down. I think he gets down to 10. They said, look, if we can find 10 people in that place who are righteous, we won't destroy it. Guess what? They didn't find 10. They didn't find 10. And I mean, 10 would have been Lot and his family, okay? Yeah. No, they didn't find 10. Whoa. Yeah. Think about that. All right, verse 16. Sorry, verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? I want y'all to get this about Abraham. I, I pray we all this way. Watch this. The Lord said. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? Yeah, the Lord's there. This is the Lord. Yeah. The thing which I do. Now he's talking to his angels. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. What nation would that be in prophecy? Jews. The nation of Israel. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Right. That's going to be the kingdom program. Verse 19, for I know him. Don't you love that? Yes. God says, I know that man. Yes. That he will command his children. If a man wants to know what pleases the Lord, that he will command his children and his household after him, that they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he, spoken of, he had spoken of him. His word. By the way, there's another passage where he says, I know Abraham. I think it's Genesis 26. He says, he'll teach my law, he keeps my laws, my statutes, and my judgments. People think the law just came with Moses. God's laws have been out there, codified with Moses in the commandment, but Abraham was keeping his laws, his statutes, and his judgments. All right, let's keep going. Verse 20. And the Lord says, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is what? Great. great. And because their sin is very grievous. And what was that sin? Sodomy. Sodomy. More to it than that too. There's a lot more to it, but that's the main one. That's the main one. Right. By the way, they were, it was so such debauchery. Look at verse 21. I will go down now. Remember, I said that personal touch to investigate. Mm -hmm. God does this for man because he man thinks <laughs> the guy was working on my uh, teeth when he found out. Because I, I, he goes, "What you got later?" I said, "Well, 
Hopefully I can talk, but I got a, a Bible study now. Oh, so he's he's a he's he's a he's not an atheist, he's an agnostic. And you don't want to say too much with somebody. Yeah. Like, and and he, he was asking all these questions. No, he's the hygienist. And uh I couldn't say much anyway. He had things in my car like this, but he'd be really First time you were ever kept talking. Well he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, I just heard today. He goes, I just heard that um Stephen Hawking, this He's a he's a uh, he's a physicist, a, 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 a physicist. He died. So the guy started asking me about life, and I'm like, oh man, how much did I tell him? I couldn't talk. I don't want him to stick me. <laughs> I gotta go see the man again. He only did one side. I was like, oh man, I couldn't say much anyway. So maybe I'll talk to him on Friday. But I was just anyway. He was he was talking. We were talking about these things about life, death, and, and things like that. Um, you talk about the sin very big. Look at verse. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. He, he, God does this so that man, it's for mankind's sake. Look at verse 21. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And what I want you all to see, you see God doing what he, he desires man, and he, he's investigating. He's doing it for see us. for himself. Right. And that's why I brought up to God. He, he thinks that God, he believes in a God, but he thinks it's a God that you can't know personally. He says, oh, it's just, he just started everything and you can't know him personally. And what I want to, verses like this tells you, not only can you know God personally, God, he comes down to your level and, and checks things checks out. Things yeah. out. <laughs> you, we can know the God we serve personally. We do through Christ, right? What kind of weird God would just like, Start something and just be like, eh, whatever. I know. Go do something else. Kind of crazy. That's why we miss Ryan later, boy. <laughs> People say, well, I'm Ryan. Yeah, thank you, brother. Exactly. Ah, okay, go ahead. I do all this stuff. The guy was, he was saying things like, oh, you can see from the creation. He said this. You can see from the creation. He goes, oh, the beauty. And, and, and he, he says he, went, he was in biological uh, sciences and this. He says, but we can see through the creation that, it, he says there's a designer behind it. I go, oh, right there, right there. You know? <laughs> It is. So he's like kind of like a deist or something. Yeah, like a deist. Uh -huh. It's like my uncle. So maybe I'll, I'll work on him after he finishes working on my tea. I'll make sure all the work is done, <laughs> and then uh, and we can talk. Okay, I can't say much of that. So, so then you see that Abraham goes through whether, the, okay, just for time's sake, look at verse 23. Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he won't. He's interceding on life behalf. Verse 24, Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous? So he goes all the way down. He says, does not the judge all the earth do right? He gets us down to um, verse number 32. If you go there for time's sake, look at verse 32. And he said, oh, let the Lord... 10. Verse 32. Yeah. 32. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, look, look, at the, look at the mercy of God. I will not destroy for the ten's sake. Ten God was going to not destroy the entire place if there were ten righteous people in the place. Didn't that the mercy of God? Yes. For their sake. Amen. But we already know he ended up destroying it. <laughs> look at uh, chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot said in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seen, by the way, <laughs> not only does Lot live in Sodom, you know what it means that he's in the gate of Sodom? He's on the board. He's, he's one of the judges of Sodom. He's in he's he's a, he's he's, a, he's in quality. And he let this go he's on? Well, because he's only one man, though. Okay. You're going to see that in this, they're going to actually say, who is this one man Lot trying to tell us anything? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. True. Yeah. He's a counselor. He's a counselor. <laughs> By the way, he, he started outside of, of Sodom. He moved into Sodom, and now he's on the board of, uh, of Sodom, okay? He's, a, he's on the board of directors of the place. You see what's going on. Now he's part of the political system there. Yeah. Now it could be for good. He can offer some godly wisdom, but, you know, they didn't listen. Verse number one. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself before his, he, he bowed himself before his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. 
And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Now they're angels. And they're there for they're on a business trip, not pleasure. It's a business trip. Lot, he understands what's going on. And he wants to protect them from the men there. Because watch what happens. When I say protect, he doesn't want them to be exposed to the men of Sodom. By the way, this is in the evening. And they're going to stay in the dark time. Yeah, watch this. Verse 3. <laughs> but you know what? The sons of God, the angels are the sons of God, and they're like God the Father. And they're like the Lord. In this way, it, he begged them, verse number 3, and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast. By the way, the angels eat. Bacon. Yeah, and, and did bake, oh, unleavened bread, type of the Lord Jesus. And they did eat. So they eat like, like men. Verse but, 4. But. But. They before they lay down. <laughs> now this is the evening. Now watch what the men of the city do. The men of the city, even the men of Sodom, com com compass the house around. They, 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 they encircle the house. But here's the, here's the worst part about it. Both old and young. By the way, y'all, all of these men are homosexuals who yeah. want to get him. Listen. Yeah. All the people from every quarter, verse 5, and they call unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them. Do y'all understand what's going on here? This is craziness. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. They're not saying know them. Hey, tell me more about yourself. No, no, yeah. No, 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 uh-huh. This is, this is the craziness when this stuff... Look, watch this. Verse 6. And Lot went out of the door... Uh, excuse me. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me... I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now, this why, is hard. Why would he do that? Well, Dodie, I'm about to tell you why I think he's doing that. He has such reverence for the Lord, and these are the Lord's messengers, his angels, that he would rather give his virgin daughters. Right. If they, here's what he has to, he has to make a business decision. They're trying to get the, my, these men. That's a sacrifice. He a is. He, sacrifice. he loves the Lord more than he loves his children, which is fine. Everybody get that? He loves the Lord more than he loves any humans. Okay, man. Now, obviously, he doesn't want to give his virgin daughters, but he's saying, look, if y'all just want that. You have a choice. Here, here are my virgin, pure virgin daughters. Use, you, basically, use them. Don't use them. Okay? Yeah. See? Okay. And I want you to understand, if we saw this happening, you're talking about a lot of men, hundreds of men, against Lot and his little tiny household. And Lot is like, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, keep going. Let's keep going. By the way, I'm going to talk to you about these two daughters that are under his roof. Because the question comes later about his, his sons-in-laws. Okay, keep that in mind. All right? I want you to see in verse 8, though, I have two daughters which have not known man. Verse 8, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye unto them as is good in your eyes. Only This is why he did that. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. But, but look at these wicked men. Verse 9, and they said, stand back. Stand back. Get out the way. <laughs> and they said again, now here's what I was saying, though, because he's a judge of the city, Notice the contempt they have for him. That's good. I'm going to say how they would say it. Look at this. This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will need to be a judge. You know what they said? This guy is not from here. That guy's from out of there. When it says he came to sojourn, remember, Lot didn't, he wasn't born and raised in Sodom. He came to the city. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, we're from the city. Who is this guy we're telling us? That's what they're saying. <laughs> This one fellow came in to soldier. They said, this guy came in temporarily, and now all of a sudden he's he going to be a judge over us. Yeah. Watch, that's what they're saying. And he will need to be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? The only thing you could do worse with Lot than what they were planning on doing that is to do that and kill him. Yeah. That's what they want to do. Verse, verse number 9, and they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. These men are going to break the door down to get at his guest. Now, thank God, everybody, these men are really angels. Because if they were just regular men like you and me, they were in trouble. Because you're talking about hundreds of men. Mm 
But watch what God, the, God's angels do. Verse 10. But the man, but the men, these are the angels, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. The angels did The angels did that. Verse 11. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Both small and great, so that they were weary, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men, now, I, I'm going through all of this so we can see, we get into Lot's wife here, okay? Keep going. Verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou, hast thou here any besides? Now, where are they at right now? Who are these men? These are the angels. The angels. Because they're about to do some things. They, they ask him a lot. What you got going on? Who, where are they right now? They're, they're inside the house, okay? There you go. They said, Son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. So look at those categories. You have any son-in-laws? Because they, they, he knows, they know he has a daughter. You got any son-in-laws? You got any sons who aren't here? We see thy daughters. And whatever else you have in the city, get your, get your cattle, get your whatever. Bring them out of this place. Verse, 9, verse 13. 13 is the number for a bet. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord, remember the righteous judge, had sent us to do what? Destroy. That's their business. Be there. Verse 14. Woo. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. Right. Wow. Get you Watch this now. Because I used to think one way, but after I kept reading this over and over, you got Lot's house. Don't look at my... Y all, y all can't see. This is Lot's house, okay? In here, we know he has... At least, at least two daughters of uh, Mary, and, oh, you know, two daughters. We just know he got two daughters there. Um, his wife, we're going to find out, is there. Oh, no. Uh, his wife is there. Uh, lots in there. That's all we know for now. Okay, we're going to see that. But notice, this is in Lot's house. Stay with me. Okay? Go and... To verse 14, Genesis 19, 14. And Lot did what? Went out. Lot went, so here's Lot. He goes out. He, he went out. Outside? He went outside. Okay. He ain't got to worry. Those guys are blind. They, they, they blind mice now. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> he ain't worried about them. He can hit them in the face and say, you blind. He, can, he ain't worried about all them. So here's who's in Lot's house that we know. His two daughters that he offered them. Who had, they virgins. Stay with me. They had not known a man, his wife and Lot. He went out. Look at this. I was looking at this guy. I said, oh, boy. Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law. So his sons-in-law are somewhere outside of his house. But if they're his sons-in-law, uh -huh. he's got at least, in, just say, I'm, I'm my assumption is he got at least, at least two more daughters. At least two. We don't know how many sons-in-laws he could be. He could be three. He could be three daughters. But he, he had at least two more daughters who are married off. Because look what it says. Verse 14. And Lot went out of his house and spake unto his sons-in-law. And that would make sense. They probably living in another tent somewhere. Not under their father-in-law. They in another tent, right? But if they're in another tent, then the two, at least two daughters that Lot married off are with their and by the way, I know why he went to the sons. Because once a man once a man gives his daughter over to a man, He's even as the father, he has to go, in this Bible, he has to go through the man. Right? He's the head. He's the head. Numbers chapter 30. Remember, if a woman vows a vow, she's in her father's house, he could veto the vow, annul it, or, or make it happen. But if she's married, her husband can do the same thing. And what I'm thinking is, you're seeing Lot. He's not saying, where's my daughters? I'm going to take he's, yeah. he's going to the men who are responsible for them spiritually and say, look here. God is sending me here to get all, you know, they're my daughter. You, you get your family out of there. And I'm going to stay with me. Verse number 14. Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. Mm -hmm. so and that. said, by the way, married his daughters. I'm going to tell you this. If they were espoused, like Mary and Joseph, they would have said espoused. 
when a man and a woman get married in the Bible, they consummate that marriage the night of the marriage. Okay, so I don't think these are the virgin daughters. These are, no, these no. are married women. Okay. All right, keep going. And said, up. Now watch what he says to his sons-in-law. Yes. Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. Ooh. But look. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. You know that? They doubted him. They doubted Lot. They didn't appreciate his godly wisdom. And I can tell you, those men were men of Sodom. But who is the one who's ultimately part of the blame? Lot himself. He shouldn't have went to Sodom in the first place. And he definitely shouldn't have given his daughters to marry the men of Sodom. Because ultimately, you know what probably happened. I don't know, but I think this would happen. Weren't they heathen? Well, the, the men would have been heathen. Yeah. Do you, unbelievers in the Lord, the God of Israel, of the, of the Hebrews. But Lot might have cost his other daughters their life. You know, I hear from people who say, Brother Ron, I just learned to write the vision. I'm 60 years old. I was involved in my Baptist church. I raised my children up in it. And now they have children, and they have my grandchildren in it. And I'm the one who put my children in it. I'm responsible for my children and grandchildren being in that denomination church. I hear that all the time. And it hurts them because they, they say, I just learned to write the vision, and I realized I led my whole family, generations. Innocently, though. Innocently. I know. I, it's innocent. And I'm sure with Lot it was innocent. Yeah. But it doesn't make it easier. No. Because guess what? Now the children that you raised in the Baptist church, now your grandchildren are raised in it. You're trying to recover your children grandchildren. They're not. Your children aren't listening. And you know... Without the mercy of God, those grandchildren are going to follow in their steps. And it hurts your heart as a grandparent, doesn't it? It's going to be hard. By the way, Lot, he's not only worried about what if his daughters had children by these men. We don't know. He could be grandpa. So he's going to see. He could have been because they would have been named in the ones that were saved. Well, the point, I'm just saying, well, the point is, he goes to the sons-in-law. and the son, He has two, at least two That's daughters with them. more. People. But I'm saying, what if they had ch children, yeah. Lot, Lot's grandchildren? But they didn't. Well, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't know. It's recorded though. How many went out with him? Right. Well, we. Here's my point. We don't know how many children they had, but we're gonna find out how many people eventually went out with Lot. That's right. what I'm saying. Well, with all that on his mind, I remember you reading the verse where he uh, said that he was lingering. Oh, oh we, we don't see all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can see all that coming to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's in this passage. Yeah. Stay with me. Stay with me. You write up. You, you write up. You write on it, Craig. All right, everybody look at verse 15. What is one locked? Everybody. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise and take thy wife. Now, now I got we're Lot's wife now. Two. So the next 20 minutes will be about Lot's wife. But anyway, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are what? Here. Look at that verse, though. Which are where? Here. Where's here? This one right here. In the house. Take your wife and your two daughters that are here. That's another clue to me that he has some daughters over there right. who ain't coming out with him. That's right. And the reason I brought up the whole thing when people bring their children down, Lot is probably thinking, oh, what am I? I, I brought my family into son. Now, I married my daughters off to these heathen sodomites. Okay. Oh, but they were, we don't know. Maybe they were. Maybe they, they want women too. And then, God forbid, he has grandchildren. He's worried about his whole family dying back there. you got to remember this. Now, with the denomination, it's spiritual, right? There's going to be spiritual loss of, of reward and so forth. But I want you to see that this is real. Lot is thinking, oh boy. Because guess who comes out with him? Here we go. Look at verse number 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot. See, they're serious. They're not playing. Wife. Saying, arise, take what? Who? Thy wife, thy two daughters, which are what? Here, which means the ones in your house, those are girls are with their, the other girls are with their husband. Lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, there it is, Craig. You know what? Lot probably gives a lot of grief for just taking his time with her. But I'm telling you, as a, I'm, I'm thinking as a father and grandpa, maybe, he's thinking like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I got family. Mm -hmm. Don't we all think about that? 
when the rapture happens, when the people are God, it's like our family. That's my Everybody get locked, okay? Let's look at it. Verse 16. And while he lingered, <laughs> I love this. The men laid hold upon his hand. Didn't these angels come to do the work of the Lord? To do God's business? A lot of it's like this. Uh, yeah, they're like, they grabbed him. They grabbed him. Verse 16, and upon the hand of his wife. They grabbed his wife. Remember, like, okay. Right. Don't, that's what we're looking at. They grabbed his wife. And. Doesn't that show that the Lord has mercy on her? Right? At that time? Look. And upon the hand of his two daughters. Why do they keep saying two daughters? Because no doubt he had other daughters. They had them outside. Right. These are the daughters who are virgins under his house. His, right. You know what the Bible calls them? Paul calls them? First Corinthians 7? His virgins. I called my daughter my virgin. That's right. Here we go. Verse 16. Oh, I, I mentioned the mercy of the Lord. I forgot it's in the verse. The Lord being what? Merciful unto him. To spare those two daughters. Right. From those guys. You, you know why they spared? Because something happened with these two daughters, like I tell you. You know why they spared? Because they're under their father's roof. Right. And as long as they're under their, his father's, their father's roof, how, how their father get blessed, they get blessed. Okay? There's, there's some spiritual uh, significance being there with their father. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. That means outside the city. Outside the city. Verse 17. And it came to pass, uh-oh, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life. Now here's, here, here's why we remember Lot's wife. Here's the instruction from Almighty God through the messengers. Look not what? Behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be what? Consumed. Consumed. And Lot says unto them, okay, that's the word of the Lord does. No, here's Lot. Oh, not so, my Lord. He's still dead. He's a stubborn dude. <laughs> stubborn dude. Verse 19. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Can I ask you something? Didn't the angels of God say, go to the mountain? And you'll be why would, tempted. Why would he say, no, I can't go to the mountain? <laughs> it reminded me of Moses later when God says, go and tell the people, Pharaoh, let my people go, they'll believe you. Moses I can't do it, Lord, I can't speak. They are always thinking of man's ideas. I know, the humanity. Look, check this out. God says, who made your mouth? Right. I know you can't speak. I don't have the ability to make you speak. And Moses went, like, and then God says, all right, here come Aaron. Yes. God already had Aaron on the way. Oh, Aaron was coming from, from, from Egypt. You can see that? God. Hey, man, yeah. listen. If God's angels say, go to the mountain, go to, by the way, I can see, I don't have, okay, y'all read it yourself. He ended up in the mountain anyway. Because the city of Zoar, Z-O-A-R, that he went to, that got destroyed too. So he ended up in the mountain anyway. He just took the hard way. Just do what God says. That's all I'm saying. Just had to doubt it. <laughs> all right. Verse 20. Behold now, the city is near to flee unto. This city is. Uh, can, all right. It's a little city. Here's how he tries to justify. He goes, hey, um, you see that city there? It's a tiny little bit. I can just go and sneak over there. Now watch this. Oh, verse 20, let me escape thither. And then he repeats it. Is it not a little one? Who cares about that little old city? Just let me have that. That tells me that Sodom was a huge city. And my soul shall live. Verse 21, he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also. Isn't that gracious of God, God's angel? That I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. By the way, he was supposed to destroy both Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities round about, including this one. But because Lot was there and asked for it, he didn't right away. Later, he did, they did because Lot ends up in the mountain anyway. Verse 22, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord... Rained Sodom, uh, excuse me, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, what? Brimstone, Brimstone and fire from the Lord <coughs> out, of heaven. out of heaven. When you talk about Revelation 21, about the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, by the way, there's one other thing we're going to see that's in that lake. But notice, that's a type of a, the, the second death. Remember what Revelation 21 8 says, 
They shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. What's the second down? What's coming out? Brimstone and fire, right? Verse 25. And he overthrew those cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back. Keep, keep this in mind. Look back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Oh, man. <clears throat> pillar of salt. Now, that's what we're going to look at. Why a pillar of salt? Well, the first thing I want you to see is that, uh, let's look at those two things. She looked behind. So they were, she, they were coming out, right? And he said, don't look behind. And why did the Lord say, remember Lot's wife, she looked Behind her. Remember in Luke, uh, look behind. In Luke, the Lord says, if you are on the housetops, come down. Don't go and get your stuff. Get out of there. Because the wrath is coming, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Second Peter, Peter, Second Peter 2, 4 through 9, Peter says that Sodom and Gomorrah, I, I gotta show you something, because I want you to this off. Um, go to hold your hand there and go to 2 Peter chapter number 2. Go to 2 Peter chapter number 2. Even all these years later, Sodom and Gomorrah is an eternal, how do I want to say, an eternal uh, testimony. A pillar is a, is a testimony. It's an example. Example, right. But, 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 a, but, a, but an example that's constantly testifying to something. Right. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, if you will. This is way at the end of the prophetic program. Look at verse 4. 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, that's Genesis 6 angels, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. You know when Paul says we shall judge angels, 1 Corinthians 6? Those are some of them right there at the great white throne judgment. Verse 5. And spared not the old world, the Lord brought up this, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now later, verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample, that's a sample to the Jews, mm -hmm. unto those that after should live ungodly. Amen. Now, what's Amen. that? I, I'm going to tell you about this pillar of salt in a minute. <laughs> now, here's some, some research. I'm going to tell you something about it. Keep reading. Verse 7. And deliver just blood. Do you see how the Bible testifies about what? Even in all of his stubbornness, like we are, he still is just That's in the eyes of God. Grace. He vexed with, get it? Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. I guess he would be living there. Mm -hmm. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing. Oh, could you imagine what he saw and heard? Oh, boy. They would just do it right out there in the streets. Oh gosh. No wonder he married his other first daughters off, and then kept the other two in his house. Like y'all ain't going out there. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now here's the point. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, the lot in his family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. And what I want you to see is that Sodom and Gomorrah and what happened there is supposed to be an eternal uh, um, ensample to the Hebrews, right? But example to others as well. And by turning his wife into a pillar of salt, a pillar, we're going to look at what pillar and why salt. Statue. Number one, she looked behind. I'm going to tell you something about looking behind. Why would she look behind? Number one, because she was from there. Her family, her friends. I wrote that she remembered her family. Hey, my family's there. That's my right. friends. The beauty of the place, the energy of the city. <laughs> That's what she was all into, right? That's right. He married one of the city. Yeah. Girls. He he went there. He was just he was just Abraham's nephew. Right. And then he he has this one. And you can see in the in the thing she she yearned for the good old days. Yeah. Let me let me show y'all a little bit about remembering. You know, Paul Paul's going to tell you when it comes to your life in the world, what Egypt represents the world. Don't remember all the good stuff about it. I'm going to show you that the people of Israel, when they murmured against Moses, they remembered all the good food of Egypt. They didn't remember they were getting beat down every day. 
Paul says, therefore, remember that you've been in time past Gentile. He said, remember the bad stuff and why God is taking you from there. Right. Don't remember all the good stuff. If you start you focusing on that. That way you praise God. She should have said, praise God that we're going to be delivered from that wrath. Right. But instead, she's trying to look back. Uh-oh. And she turned into a pillar of salt. Uh, a pillar. A pillar in the Bible is a monument, a memorial, a testimony. Uh, Paul says, and it's not, it's not just a post, pillars can be people. In Galatians chapter number 2, Paul says, these that seem to be somewhat, speaking of the, the pillars of the Jerusalem church, Peter, James, and John. Uh, Peter, James, and John who, who seem to be pillars. Remember that, Galatians 2? 1 Timothy 3, he says, the church, which is his body, the local assembly, is the pillar and ground of the truth. That's not a physical pillar, that's a spiritual pillar, right? If you want to come and have the truth of God's grace, it's the local assembly. Uh, a couple other times. You in Genesis? We're going to go back to Genesis 19. Go to chapter, go to chapter um, 28, if you will. Ooh, we're going a long way now. Yeah. And, and Brother Brown, we're, we're coming back. That, that verse where um, it talks about putting your hand on the plow and not looking back. Uh, that's that's the Lord Jesus. In fact, we're going to end with the Lord Jesus Christ back to where he gets in that passage. He goes, no man is worthy of the kingdom if he puts his hand to the plow if he looks back, yeah. trying to see like what's back there. With that one, yeah. yeah, going back to his old life and mm -hmm. stuff. That's exactly right. I just want you to see this issue of a pillar, and then we'll see why I saw it, and then we'll, we'll be wrapping up. Uh, Genesis 28, if you will. Verse. Look at verse 12. Uh, you remember Jacob had a dream, Jacob's ladder? Yeah. Verse 12, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Why didn't it say descending and ascending? Why did he say ascending and descending? Because when the Lord sets up his kingdom, the angels are going to be here. And they're going to be doing the work of the kingdom going back and forth. And the Lord Jesus Christ says, when you see the Son of Man sitting on the throne of His glory, and the angels ascending and descending, the Lord says it in the four Gospels. Because what's going to happen? Look here at verse number 13. 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and of the God of Isaac, that's his father, the land whereof thou liest, whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and thy seed shall all the families of earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. Because they're going to go, you know, right? They go down to Egypt. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the word of God. Awesome. That's where the temple is going to be built later. And this is the gate of heaven. Do you know where they built that temple? It's the gate of heaven. The Lord in his temple and the angels are sitting and descending. Now this is what I want you to see. Verse 18. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows. You got from Minnesota to the mighty pillows. So they don't feel like stones. They soft. Get her homeboy. And set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz, Luz at the first. And what I want you to see, this is where God's out. That issue of a pillar, there's a testimony. Okay? Because I want to see why he, he, she, she was called a, a pillar. Monument. A monument, yes. I want you to see that when, when his wife becomes a pillar, she is to be a testimony, a monument. monument. Her frame, I never told you, it just turned into petrified rock salt is what happened, just petrified. Right. And she said that, so I did some extra little research. For years and years, and, and even maybe today, y'all, we don't even know. Because the Saudi Arabian uh, authorities hide stuff. They hide stuff. Right. right. She could still be there today. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I think she is. I just think they hide that stuff in Saudi Arabia. That's where it happens. It's in that Arabian Peninsula. Stay with me. Because she was to be a monument. Now, this issue of salt, a testimony. This issue of salt, there's all type of salt in the Bible. 
The first time it's mentioned is the salt sea in Genesis. There's a covenant of salt, interesting enough, a covenant of salt. Salt is a pre preservative. There's a salt sea in um, Utah. Yeah, they, they named it after the Bible, yeah. A lot of stuff in Utah, because of the Mormons, they right. named it. Right. Salt is a preservative. I want you to remember, it, 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 it keeps something, it, keep, it preserves something. It keeps it, uh, um, keeps it going, right? Preserves it. Remember that. Um, there's the, the covenant of salt. God's going to continue it on. It continues on. Numbers, numbers 18 and 19. Uh, salt is used to season taste. Um, Colossians 4, Paul says, Let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt, that you might know how to answer every man. And then Ephesians 4, he says, Let, your, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. The grace message is like salt to food. Uh, Leviticus chapter 2 talks about uh, season the, the uh, salt to season uh, the sacrifice and so forth. Um, Joshua 15 talks about the city of salt. Um, salt was used for healing, 2 Kings 2. Ezekiel 16, God put salt on little Israel to preserve them and so forth to heal them. There's a valley of salt in 2 Kings 14. It was part of the offering of God in the temple, Ezra chapter 6 and Ezra chapter 7. And lastly, less, lastly salt is used for judgment. Mm. Judgment. We're going to see that. Well, that's, that's what he did to his wife. In the Bible, salt can be used both for good or for bad. Okay, depending on the content. Let's go over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go over to chapter, uh, Mark chapter 9. As we uh, come down in, look at Mark chapter 9. Yeah, Mark chapter 9. And in one passage, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to show how salt is used both for good and for bad. This is a similar passage when he says, remember Lot's wife. He's warning them not to look back. Not to go back. Hold your hand there. I, I, I want to get, put this on there because you guys will understand this. This issue of looking back. I want to get this on there so people can know. Hold your hand in Mark chapter 9 and go with me to Exodus chapter 16. Remember I mentioned the people of Israel? Was, was that a blessing that God brought them out of Egypt through Moses? Yeah. Yes. He brought them over through the Red Sea miraculously, dry ground. He, he swallowed up with the, when he congealed and iced up the waters with the wind, and then he gave us a warm south wind and, 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 and melted the waters over the Egyptians. Wasn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. Let me show you how they felt about it. Chapter 16 of Exodus. Look with me in verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel were thankful to Moses and Aaron. Oh, they murmured. Yeah, they complained. Another word for murmur is just complaining. By the way, you, you know, when you read this, and it takes a lot because I read this all the time. Do you know the people who murmured the most? The people who was in the furthest tents away from Moses. I got a kick out of that. It says that they were way out here looking. What, what Moses? Who do you think he is? What they tell me? And I was just, ain't that funny? The people who were the farthest away from God, because where was Moses? Moses had the tabernacle, right? The people who were the furthest away did the most complaining. You know, Chris and I realized that in ministry. The people who are the closest and the more humble and stuff. They're low maintenance, no problems, no complaints, and if they don't like something, they figure they're telling them. It's the people who are the least spiritually mature who complain all the time. And it's, it's right, as I read this, I just I laugh, I say, these are people. Look at verse 3, the lack of faith. Yeah. And the children of Israel said unto them, can I say something, y'all? These fools went to Moses and Aaron with all the things they got to deal with and said this. They just come out of the Red they Sea. They just come out of the Red Sea. Wait, don't eat. We are in chapter 16. That just happened in chapter 12. Okay, look at that. We ain't that many days. Okay, and the children of Israel said unto them, We would to God we had died oh, by the hand, of the, poor the hand of the Lord. Where? In the land of Egypt. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. What, what are they remembering about Egypt? Like Lot's wife. When we sat by the flesh pots. Oh, no. And when we did eat bread to the full. 
For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Yeah, that's why God brought them out. What about making of the bricks? I know. They forgot about the bricks. <laughs> and they couldn't even get the hay. They had to go. They had to get it themselves. They used to bring it to them. Right. And they got beat down. They forgot about all that. Egypt represents the world. I'm going to tell you why God says be thankful. Because when you start thinking about how, how good things were before you were in Christ. No For, don't 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 think about that stuff. Remember the bad stuff, and be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> Verse four. Now look at the Lord's response. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven, like the Lord Jesus Christ, for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law. No, I can't get it to all of you at time. Can I tell you what happened? God says, I want you to get this miraculous bread from heaven. Every day, just take enough for your family for that day. Except for, for five days, I want you to take enough for one day. You know what happens? Read the thing. Some people took extra, and it stank, and it had worms. Right. Okay? <laughs> and then he says, on the sixth day, I want you to take two days' worth. Right. And I'm going to miraculously keep it, and it won't stank with no worms, because you can't go out on the Sabbath and gather on any on the Sabbath. Okay? Everybody got Yep. Do you know what fools, some fools, took... On the, on the sixth day, on the sixth day, instead of taking two days' work, they only took one day's work. On the Sabbath, they were walking out there looking for it, like there's no there. How come it's not here? Because <laughs> God told you, the Sabbath represents the kingdom where there's no work, no toil, no work. Work these days. Don't work on the Sabbath. Take two days' work. I, I preserve it super, supernatural. They didn't do it. So, so there were some people who took more than they should have each for the first five days. Yeah. On the sixth day, some people didn't take too much, didn't get out on Sabbath looking. And, and the God just said, Moses, let, move out of the way and just let me zap them. It behooves us to listen and heed what God says. I'm, I'm glad it's here because it's, it shows man that even if you with Moses in the world, God tells you to do something, they just, you're going to always have some people who yeah. don't yeah. obey. Oh, By the way, it's, it was called a mixed multitude. They had some Egyptians among them as they came out of mixed multitude. And what these Egyptians probably did because of their Egyptian mind, see, they were Egyptian to the core. The, the, the Hebrew people, they were Egyptians in their minds. But these people were in their hearts. And they caused these people to say, it was a mixed multitude. Um, it's always a few. Look at, uh, look at chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. Okay. And in the morning... Then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And are we? And what are we? Speaking of him and Aaron. <coughs> your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. You see that? Yeah. They're murmuring against Aaron and Moses, but really who are they blaming? God. God. When the people of Israel got mad at Samuel and said, we want a king, what did God say? They're not against you, they're against me. When you attack Paul like people do, they're not attacking Paul, they're attacking the Lord himself. I just want, I just want you to see, I want to get this, I look at verse 13. And it came to pass that at, the, that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the host. Do you all remember what they wanted meat? They got mad because all they had was this bread. The manna. Christ. So they wanted meat. So God had these little tiny birds right on the schedule. They come in across the waters. They're tired. Their little wings are tired. So they have to take a little rest. Bam. And the people would just go and pick them up. But as they were eating the meat, God did something. He, he had it coming out of their nose. And mm. it, like he was, they were just, we got to read it. It's crazy. As they're eating it, while they're eating it, he would, it, he did something to the meat that made it come out of there, and they had this reaction to it. Because remember they said, we, we, where's our flesh pots and bread? God says, you want some bread? Here's some bread. You want some flesh? Eat that. And it says it came out of their, their nose and stuff. Yeah. Okay. He was judging them. Go over to Numbers on our way back to, to, to Mark. Go over to Numbers chapter 11. We're going to have a Wednesday night study. We're going to have a Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to get it. Numbers chapter 11. Look at verse 4. Oh, this is what I was telling you. Numbers 11, verse 4. And the mixed multitude 
that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Ah, remember Lot's wife? Don't look back. Here we go. Everybody got verse 5? Yeah. Uh, Numbers 11, 5. We remember the what? The fish which we did eat in Egypt? No, brother. <laughs> Freely. Oh, it didn't come at the expense of the, yes. your backs. <laughs> come on now. The cucumbers and the melons. And the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before I, Oh, thank you, Lord. Instead of saying, thank you for this bread from heaven, all we got is this bread from heaven. Look at Oh, ungrateful. It's ungrateful, right? I just want you guys to see how ungrateful they are. Look at verse 31. And there went forth the wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side and as it were... There were so many birds, y'all get that? That you could walk a day's journey that direction, you'd still be running into these birds, and you could go a day's journey this way. That's how many birds came up. Two cubits high. Two cubits high upon the face of the earth. You want to know two cubits? It's about 18 inches the size of a man. So the, 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 the birds stacked for two days in each direction, a day in each direction that high. Did God give them, you want some flesh? I'll give you some flesh. Woo. Verse 32. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day. And they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, not Homer Simpsons, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. Here it is. Watch this, Dodie. Everybody got verse 33? Yeah. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, yeah. ere it was chewed, the oh. wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And another passage says it was coming out of their noses and stuff. Oh, boy. He, gave, he put his wrath on them. Look, when you keep remembering back there the good, we miss the flesh pots and the bread. God says, okay, you're not thankful for what I give you. Here you go. That's why I do. That's why the Lord says, remember Lot's wife. Don't remember how things were in Jerusalem. Get out of there. Okay. Um, now decipher that big word. Which one now? Get brought that to uh, I don't know. Oh, verse saying. thirty-four. He called the name of that place Kibroth Hatava, Kibroth Hatava, because they were buried. Because they were because there they buried the people that lusted. Hey, oh, by the way, do you know that behind these fences in Saudi Arabia? They have the gravestones, thousands of gravestones, of these people like these who died in the wilderness there. They're hiding all this stuff. Well, now with technology, people got in there. If you guys want to see, there was this Asian, remember that guy from South Korea? He became the personal physician for the Prince of Saud. Was that the Saudi prince, right? One of the Saudi princes. They, he had back problems. I'll, I'll look at the video and bring it on Sunday. He had back problems. He was going to have to do surgery. And they're rich because of the oil. Well, there was a, 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 a South Korean doctor who specialized in these uh, Eastern medicines, right? And he says, let me take a crack at it. And he did some acupuncture, some other stuff, and it cleared this Saudi prince's problem, and he made him his personal physician. I got the video. I'll tell you where to find on YouTube. So because he's the personal physician, the, 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 the prince gave him access to the entire kingdom wrote a letter, stamped it with his ring, just like they do in the Middle East, and this guy could take this letter and his family to any parts of Saudi Arabia. So he ended up, huh? He did it in the prince's limo, right? He helped the prince. The prince says, my land is your land. So the guy, he's a believer, he says, well, I'm going to go check some things out. He went behind the, uh, the fenced-in areas, and he knew some of the Bible. He starts seeing that these places in Saudi Arabia... He would look at the Bible and it'd be that. He found all these places. He found the, the, the tombstone, found the rock, uh, the, the splinter, all these different things that other people have seen here and there. But he says, you know what? All that stuff is in Saudi Arabia. It's being held back and hidden because they're, they're Muslim. They don't want the Jewish, right. they don't want the truth of the Jewish it Bible. Yes, it'll, it'll, it'll prove the Bible was true. But he got access because he was the personal physician and the prince was so trustful. 
he and his family got to go visit these places. There's a video of it. I'm gonna bring, I'm, I'll give you the link to it, okay? Anyway, we, we got to come down here. But here's what I want you to see. If you go back to Mark, go back to Mark chapter 9. Nine. All right, give me about five minutes. Mark 9. Now, why a pillar of salt? A pillar, because it's going to be a, a testimony. And what I'm, I, I actually believe it's still there. I read some other stuff. Uh, Josephus, if you don't know who Josephus is, yes. he's a contemporary uh, of the first century. Um, it's, you know, it's outside of the Bible, but he was, he was a, a well-known uh, historian. historian right? He said in his day, this is Josephus in the day, around the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in his day, you could go over there to, to, the, to the remnant. This is remnants, because the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, that stuff is still ash today. Oh, that's right. You could go, in, Josephus said, you could go over there and you could still see the pillar of salt of Lot's wife. It was there in his day. That was thousands of years, okay? Here's the point. I still think it's there. But here's the point. I want you to see what the Lord says about salt. He's going to say the good about salt, but then the bad. Look at uh, Mark chapter 9 and start at verse 50. Look at verse 50. Wow. You ever hear people talk about Christians being the salt of the world, salt of the earth and all that? Right. Right? Look at this. Look at uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Salt is good. Because he's going to talk about you're the salt of the world. But if the salt have lost his saltiness, his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Now that goes off what he says in another passage about being the salt of the earth, right? And if the salt loses saltiness, what is it good for but to be trodden down by man, right? But look at verse 49. For everyone shall be salted with what? Fire. Fire. Where, what, what does salt <laughs> represent here? In this passage, salt represents fire, and that fire is God's wrath. And what I'm showing you is because Lot's wife looked back, it's a warning to the little flock that when you see that abomination, make that so flee. Don't don't get your stuff. Don't grab nothing. And don't look back. What he said, salt with fire. Look at that, verse 49. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with what? Salt. Do you know what Lot's wife became? She became her own sacrifice. Because she experienced the second death. Look at the verse right before it. See, 49 starts with a four. For everyone shall be salted with fire. Look at verse 48. Where their worm dieth not... And the fire is not quenched. That's a type of that hell and lake of fire. Yeah. She, what happened to her, she got salted with salt, according to the Lord Jesus Christ. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Now, I say the best for last. Because a lot of times, the Bible just mentions fire and brimstone, right? Mm -hmm. He said salted with fire. So we know about brimstone and, and fire. But look, so you got to be a student of God's word. He just sticks this in there to have fun. And once you study out, look, the last verse we're going to look at is Deuteronomy 29. Go to Deuteronomy 29. These Mark verses are He's good for... He's talking to the Jews in Mark 9. He's talking to the Jews in Mark 9. Yeah, go ahead, the, Ryan. The, uh, these are good verses for those who try and talk about annihilation, right? Like, ah, clearly, yeah, because clearly, it's... Just, right, clearly, the salt, the, it's being preserved, preserved for a reason, right? It's preserved, yeah. Just, that if people are just preserved. annihilated, why, why preserve it? Great point. Hey, what he was saying, though, is these are good verses. There's some uh, of the persuasion that uh, some denominations or some religions who think... Oh, when someone dies, they're just, or they go, they go, and they're just annihilated. Or even in hell, they just burn up and don't exist anymore. But he says they're salted with salt, they're salted with fire, they're preserved with fire. And John says in Revelation, the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. Now look at Deuteronomy 29. We'll end here. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Look at verse 23. Speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah, and and that the whole land thereof is brimstone, brimstone, and salt, and salt, and burning. Mm. That it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, 
like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. And these cities round about Adma and Zobim, uh, Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and his wrath. That's you know what? What did he burn them with? He burned them with brimstone, salt, That's and in fire. Huh? It's in Jeremiah. Yeah. Yeah, some other verses. But what's interesting, people forget about that aspect. What was raining down was both fire, brimstone, and salt. Because that's what the Lord, my point is, that's what the Lord Jesus is talking about in the book of Mark. He's looking back there and saying, remember Lot's wife. What happened to her? She got rained down with fire, brimstone, and salt. She became a pillar of salt. And I think it wasn't just like that. It was like it just piled upon her. It petrified. It just piled upon her. And according to Josephus, in his day, it was still there. I think it's still there right now. It's just been hit like a lot of things over there. So why Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt? She was a, and I think eternal, at least for the little flock, right? That's what he's talking about, the Jew. To look, the believing remnant, the believing remnant, the little flock, the Lord is warning them not to look back. Don't look behind you. When, that's, when I say get out of there, get out of there. If not, you're going to be just like Lot's wife. Don't take anything with you. Don't, he says don't go in that house. Get out of there. The only thing you grab is your, your family. You see how those angels grab the people? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. And that's what I'm saying. So anyway, I just wanted to, to finish on that. Um, I, I believe what the Lord is saying, remember Lot's wife, take them all the way back. Don't look behind at the good things. Egypt represents the world. Uh, like Israel, they, were, they wanted that stuff in the world. Don't. She, she wanted her family, her friends and all. She loved it. I told uh, Crystal Lab because I talked the energy of the city. It's all good until God judges it, right? Mm -hmm. The day Lot went out of there, the Lord says, he rained down fire and brimstone, and now we know salt. And you know what that salt was to do? Preserve Lot's wife as a petrified statue. Even to so this that day. to this day, I think. So they can know. So they, they can, can know. Can see. Well, what did Peter say? Second Peter, Peter said, remember all of that stuff that happened is an in-sample for us Jews Absolutely. of the wrath of God, okay? Absolutely. Remember Lot's wife. Don't go back. Don't look back. Yes, All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we could uh, get into your holy word this evening and uh, look at some things that we probably wouldn't normally study out during our study of, of the Apostle Paul's epistles, at least not to this extent. Uh, thank you for these Wednesdays where we can get into these things. Next time, Lord, we ask your uh, blessing upon our study of, about, upon, about the the 144,000 and the two witnesses there in Revelation, we want to look at that and bring some clarity. But until then, Father, we just thank you for this time. Again, thank you for uh, our brother Ryan's return to see our, his face in the flesh and the comfort that we can give him, but he gives us as well. And the fact he can now take back over the video ministry <laughs> from me. <laughs> his part, he can do his part. He's an expert at it. And the people appreciate him. They miss him. And we did too. Thank you for all this uh, in Christ's name. Amen.